why do you post what you post? That picture of you at home, that picture of you with the car, that picture of you with your shirt off, that picture of you with that low cut shirt, why are you posting that? Because if it's for significance, at least you understanding that is important because you can always replace the way you get significance. If you tell yourself a story, I want to go to the gym because I want to be self-motivated and self-disciplined and I'm a self-disciplined person versus I want to look good in my wedding dress on my wedding day and I'm afraid, and even deeper layers, I'm afraid to look bad in my wedding dress. That's what's really driving behavior. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. You need to believe in it long before anyone else will. Shout out to the Blue Man Group. Today, why are you actually doing what you're doing? I had a little moment, Alan, when we were when I was doing the intro where it reminded me of hyperconscious. Because I used to say, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. So it just reminded me of that because the Hyperconscious Podcast, where this all started, it started from a place of asking yourself why and understanding yourself at a deeper level, practicing self-awareness, aka hyperconsciousness. That is what we're going to talk about today. We were in a round or we were in a session of group coaching two weeks ago. And we were going through the pyramid of fulfillment, which we do not have enough time to go through on this episode because there's too many things. But one of the things in the pyramid of fulfillment was significance. And somebody wrote in the chat, they said, hey, what, what is significance and what are some examples of significance? And I realized in that moment, and I think I probably knew this at some level, but I don't think a lot of people understand what significance is. And I understand now that you and I get a lot of our significance from what we do on the day to day. So before I say significance five more times, the definition is the quality of being worthy of attention or importance. So when somebody says what makes you feel significant, it could be what makes you feel worthy, what makes you feel important, what makes you feel recognized. I was on a podcast the other day, and this came full circle, where we were talking about social media. A lot of people ask me about social media, which is great. I, I enjoy talking about it because I'm pretty passionate about a lot that happens with social media. But somebody said, why do you think so many people are struggling with comparison? And I said, well, number one, obviously, social media is a highlight reel. And when you're looking at social media, you're usually not in the best place. You're not living your usually you're not cruising down the highway in a convertible that you just bought and looking at social media. It doesn't work that way. So you're not in the process of doing something that brings joy to you. But I said, I think what we need to understand is many people are doing certain things on social media for significance. They're doing it because the number of likes that it will bring, not the level of impact. And I've used this example in the past, but when I was a bodybuilder, I wanted to think that I was posting pictures of me shirtless and in the gym because I wanted to inspire people. And at some level I did. And at some level I wanted to inspire other humans because I wanted to, to show them hard work can pay off. But the deepest level, at the deepest of all levels, I got significance from that. I mean, the number of likes was higher if I wasn't wearing my shirt. So I got significance from posting pictures of me in bodybuilding prep. And this is, you know, what's a telltale sign? I would always post the one that looked the best. So obviously the one that looks the best is going to get the most significance. When we were talking about this word in group coaching, I realized that I don't think a lot of people actually understand that this is one of the things that's running their behaviors. And I heard this in a, we were talking about Greg Plitt earlier. Greg Plitt is a, he was an actor and a physique coach what what was his what's his title? What's Greg Plitt's title? Uh, motivator, actor, and uh, fitness model. fitness model. Fitness, fitness model. model. Yeah. He. I was listening to one of the videos that he had that you probably sent me, and he was talking about how, say, there's somebody in the gym and they know they should be doing legs, but somebody that they find attractive walks in and they're over in the squat rack. I uh, sorry, they're over in the they're doing curls. 
that person should go do legs like they're supposed to. But if they go over and they start working out next to that person that they find attractive, it's because they want to feel significant by being around them. It gives them significance to get somebody to look at them when they're doing that. I've asked other people this. Why do you post what you post? That picture of you at home, that picture of you with a car, that picture of you with your shirt off, that picture of you with that low-cut shirt, why are you posting that? Because if it's for significance, at least you understanding that is important because you can always replace the way you get significance. So that's what I wanted to talk about in this episode because I think anything that's running you under the scenes, behind the scenes, behind the curtain is worth bringing to the front. Well, the first thing to acknowledge and understand here, and I had a moment earlier when you were talking about the Hyperconscious Podcast and how it's why you do what you do, change the way you act, or change the way you think, change the way you act, change the way you live, used to be our motto. Yes. And now it's health, life, love, health, and wealth. And it's all the same through line, but I think it's, it's bigger now. It's not just why you do what you do, but it's also the how. We do a lot of the how uh, on Next Level University. And so, but this one's a little bit more about why. The first thing to acknowledge here regarding significance is that it's a need that everyone has. Some people, and and I'll go through the basic needs. Tony Robbins created this. uh, At least I think he created this. And this is where I first heard it was his TED Talk. And when I was 26 years old, I got in a tough car accident. And I was looking for resources to reinvent myself because I was in so much regret. And I've told that story. There's, there's two things that really helped me reinvent myself in those early, early, early days of personal development. The first one was Tony Robbins' TED Talk. The second one, actually the first one was Bronnie Ware's book. We've interviewed her. Uh, it's called Top 5 Regrets of the Dying. And the second one was Tony Robbins' TED Talk. I, I don't know which one was which, to be honest. They were both around the same time when I was really soul-searching. So anyways, in Tony Robbins' TED Talk, he talks about, and if, if you've not seen it, you should. It's it's life-changing. I mean, it's a magnificent TED Talk. It's I, I want to know why you do what you do. What is motivating you? What is your motive for action? That's literally his words, right? And it will change your paradigm when you start to analyze yourself at this deep level. So he came up with these six basic needs that we all have, but we all have a big, big, big one and a big two. So, so... Uh, these are the six human needs. There's certainty, there's variety, there's significance, there's love slash connection, love and connection, and then there's growth and contribution. And the extent at which you are effective at meeting all of your needs consistently and sustainably over long term really is fulfillment in many ways. And my pyramid of fulfillment that I created, co-created really with Kev is... Uh, and yeah, I mean, you uh, definitely helped me I with put, it. But I probably put maybe one, maybe one thing on there. I'll take it. A couple things. Nice. A couple, one, two, three. Honestly, I don't know what Kev contributed, but I'll I know it. it was a lot because you're my main mastermind partner. I'm going to so. say that's the telltale sign of how much value somebody has added. I don't know what he did, but I'm sure it was something. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and, and so in this pyramid of fulfillment, all of those needs are in there. Uh, but it's just a much more in-depth 21 category version of with five levels. This is next level university, so there's five levels and it's foundational. And so significance is, is I think, on the third level of this five-level pyramid. And significance is driving our behavior a lot more than we like to admit. Particularly men, and I'll speak for men because I'm a man, but when I was a young boy, significance was driving my behavior a lot more than than now. And that doesn't mean that I don't care about significance. I certainly do. And in many ways, the reason I care about it less is because now I have more of it. So I understand that duality as well. But I think what's important is to understand what's really driving you. We're reading a book called Switch in book club. I always have it with me. Whatever book we're reading in book club is always on my person. And the reason why I love this book is because it talks about why you do what you do at the behavior level. And essentially what why changing your behavior is so hard is because usually the story we tell ourselves about why we do something is very different than the reality of why we do something. So for example, Kevin back then when he was posting those shirtless photos was probably telling himself and others the story that he's doing that to inspire people, which has truth. But the deeper reason why he was doing it was for significance. And if he had just owned that, not only could he transform it, but he also could change his behavior better. Because If you tell yourself a story, I want to go to the gym because I want to be self-motivated and self-disciplined and I'm a, 
self-disciplined for person versus I want to look good in my wedding dress on my wedding day. And I'm afraid, and even deeper layers, I'm afraid to look bad in my wedding dress. That's what's really driving behavior. And one of the things that I do in my coaching is change people's behavior. And the only way to do that is to get them to be honest, get them to be honest. Like Kev, we were talking earlier and you were struggling to go to the gym consistently. And we did an episode about it. And you talked about the hundred dollar bill that you're going to give to Taryn and have her rip it up if you don't go. Kevin is more driven by that $100 bill getting ripped up than he is by his inspiration to go be fit and healthy. And that's just the hard truth. And I often make jokes. I say, nobody likes kale. Like, people say that, but that's not their truth. There's, there's primary truth, there's secondary truth, and there's tertiary truth. Primary truth is what is really, truly driving your behavior. It's who you really are when no one's watching. Secondary truth is what you want to believe you are, the story you've told yourself about yourself. Tertiary truth is what you want other people to think. So that's the story you're telling others about yourself, which is even farther. And I wrote this in my article recently. The distance between what you say to other people and what you do when no one's watching is the size of your ego. And I want mine to be you know, my primary, secondary, and tertiary truth to be the same circle. That's really what my goal is in life. And it's very difficult. And trust me, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to look at some of these truths of why I do what I do. One of them being significant. So in my early twenties, you know, did I really want to get straight A's, you know, and graduate with high distinction and go to the best tech school, blah, 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 because I wanted to be the smartest version of myself. Or did I want the significance that came from being the smart kid? Did I want to make more money than other people? Right. Like, and it's both, it's definitely both, but, but you need to understand the deep layers of all of these truths if you really want to be able to change thyself. And so I think that's hopefully the direction you wanted to go in, in this episode. Yeah. My name is Nathan Schwarman. I'm from Lawrence, Kansas. I've been a client of Alan's for coming on two years now, and I really can't recommend this program enough. Um, Alan's always there for me, uh, with great advice, uh, and holding me accountable. Uh, every step of the way and and really leading by example I've grown a lot uh, in his program but he, he's grown alongside with me so I'd, I'd really recommend joining up on the program and, and joining the community this is a good this is a good little example or analogy or yeah way for you to at least look at it I've said this to Alan before there are certain people who you'll hear them. They say, oh, I just, I struggle to post on social media. It's so hard to be consistent or they just never post on social media. Watch the times when they're posting on social media because it's a direct connection to the level of significance that event gets them. So if somebody is out to a fancy dinner and they post, okay. If they're on a vacation, okay. I have somebody in my mind that I, I know this person through the grapevine, I know of this person. So it definitely could be arrogant of me to assume I know the way they're thinking, but it's just a pattern I've seen for so long now. And honestly, I've been seeing this pattern since I was in my teens. I always was looking at other people trying to figure out what was really going on behind the scenes. This person only posts content when they travel. Only. And they do a lot of traveling. One of the reasons they do the traveling, they post about it, I know this for certain, because the human condition, is because it gets them significance. It, it doesn't mean they're fulfilled, it doesn't mean they're happy, it doesn't mean they're deeply in love, it doesn't mean they're excited for the future. They understand that that will bring them significance. And if you're the type of person who says, look, I don't ever post on social media, I don't care about social media, but you do something that is noteworthy, and you post about it, you're most likely looking for significance. And you have to, to Alan's point, you have to, you have to admit it. I did a post recently for Taryn's birthday. I rented us a Mercedes and we went to uh, the drive-in. So we have in Massachusetts, probably like an hour and 15 minutes from where we live. There's a drive-in movie theater. So I don't think there's a lot of those. You went to Menden? Yeah, we went to Menden. Menden drive-in? Yeah. Yeah. So you might not know what a drive-in movie theater is if you're young and you might not have one nearby. You literally drive (laughs) your car to it and it's a giant screen outside. You turn your radio onto a station and it plays the the audio over your speakers in your car and you get to watch on this giant screen outside. We pull up in this very nice Mercedes and there's usually young kids that work there that help you find a parking spot and if your battery dies, they jump it for you and they pull up in their golf cart and they're like, dude, nice car. 
Now, there's two things I can do. One, damn right it is. Two, it's not mine, it's a rental. I chose to say it's not mine, it's a rental because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't feel aligned if I didn't. But there is a part of me that when I was driving that car, I felt more significant, for sure, 100%. 100%. That's one of the reasons I want one. Because I do feel more significant. Now, here's the trap, though. Then what? What happens after that car gets old? Because, trust me, I've had my dream car in the past. It gets old. Two years in, you're like, okay, yeah, same, same thing. I've gotten in it every day this week. It's not that big of a deal. That's when the trap starts to kick in where you got to go find new significance. Then you got to go find new significance. I am very happy and fulfilled, or I'll say the level of significance I need is very filled because of the fact that we get to do this. I feel very important. I feel very valuable. I feel like people care. I, I get that a lot. So when I talk about getting a car or making more money, I understand that that's not going to be the thing that puts me over the edge in, in the good way. It's not... I know that's not sustainable. That's just a little bit of a bonus. That's supplementary. So understand that if you're looking for significance, I believe growth contribution, at least doing it that way and getting valued for something you're really good at and something that's bringing positive change and something that you're fulfilled doing, I think that's probably the only sustainable way to really get it. Yeah, and this is a good tangible example to try to make that last <clears throat> point land for, for what Kevin's talking about. Let's Let's say... Kevin buys a new Mercedes, which is in the roadmap, quite frankly. Yes. That's going to make you feel significant, but but that will dwindle over time, not yes. only as the car depreciates, but as you get familiar with it and it becomes normal. Whereas the podcast is meeting a lot more of the needs a lot more su sustainably. And, and, and so imagine two versions of Kevin. One of them spends money he doesn't have on a on a brand new $300,000 car that no one else has for significance versus the other Kevin who just stays consistent in the gym and on the podcast and in his relationship. See, one of them is going to get a quick fix of significance and yes, it will be very significant and yes, everyone will be like holy crap, right? And that's a that's a true thing. That's what grows a lot of the economy, honestly. But two two weeks in, two months in, two years in, this other Kevin over here who's putting in the real work for a really fulfilling health, wealth, and love life, health, love, life, and love, that version of Kevin is going to get a lot more significance, even though it's a lot shorter. I know. Sorry. I butchered that. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's a struggle, man. Life, love, health, and wealth. There you go. I, you know what it is? I screwed up the syntax, so after yeah, that, I'm, If you I'm, don't I'm start with the right thing, it's <laughs> yeah, anything yeah, could happen. I know. I understand. Anything could happen. So... One version of Kevin gets a new car and feels significant. The other version of Kevin can eventually get that car, but his significance, love, growth, contribution, certainty, variety incrementally increases over time through sweat equity. And obviously, you know, we all want nice things and we talk about the five M's of motivation and we'll get into that another time. Um, I think we did an episode on that at some point. I don't know which one it was, but if you type in motivation in our YouTube channel, it'll most likely come up. And the, the the point that I want to drive home here is if you are driven by significance, you have to understand that and then realize whether or not you're effectively chasing significance in a way that also meets other needs and in a way that's actually sustainable. Because if you are spending money you don't have for significance, you're going to feel significant and then lose it, which I've seen happen dozens of times, you know, and then you lose all your significance and then you lose yourself. When you're chasing significance at the expense of love and fulfillment, you lose yourself. You know, and I, I tell this story probably too often, but when I had that friend of mine in college say, Alan, you're the most popular kid on this campus, it was, I think, 5,000 people in the school or something like that for undergraduates, maybe 4,000. And I remember I felt really significant, but I traded in fulfillment because in order to be no well known and and go to all the parties and be on all the, the sports intramurals and also be in the gym and also be friends with everybody and also do well in school and also be a part of this and that and also bring my high school friends to my college parties. And like, I had a lot of significance. I did, but it, it came at the expense of so much else and it wasn't worth it genuinely. And again, at the time I didn't know any better. I was just a college kid, but I do know better now. And if I could go back in time, I would say, okay, Alan, what is it that you're really after? What, like, why are you doing this? Like, why, why are you inviting all your high school friends to, to college? And why are you going to these parties? And, and 
then I would analyze it. I'd say, okay, why am I doing what I'm doing? And then I would re-strategize. Like, do I really care that much about that? Is that even going to matter in five years? You know, why am I really here? And will I be friends with all these people in 10 years? These are important questions. And again, this is a hyperconscious episode. That's what hyperconscious is. Ask the tough questions and answer them with the difficult answers so that you can make better choices, really. And and if you are being driven by significance, and if you're a, a, a man in particular, I think statistically speaking, statistically speaking only, the masculine energy craves significance. The feminine energy craves love. We both crave both, but from my coaching and all of my studying of humanity and myself, I've felt that males tend to crave significance more than females. Um, Masculine energies, I should say. I don't really want to get into the male-female thing, but masculine energies tend to crave significance. Feminine energies tend to crave love. We both crave both. But what I think is ironic is that when you focus on growth and contribution, you end up with all the love and significance. And I, I think that's really what we're trying to suggest here. Yeah, it's interesting Again, I go on a lot of podcasts. I, you hear me say that often, but I, I've learned so much. It's so many. I get so many lessons. I get so much perspective. When I get introduced as CFO, founder, and host of Next Level University, a global top 100 podcast, all that, 675,000 listens, 125 plus countries, multi six figure business, that feels really good. I feel really significant. But that's 10, not that's two minutes of the interview. That's it. That's it. And then that fades away. And then we go into the interview part. If I have one interview that day, that's two minutes of my day. And the rest of it is me actually existing as a human being. So as, and this is always going to be my goal. I will have a Mercedes in the very near future, but I always want people to realize that, yes, does that add some sort of energy into my life? Yes. Does it make me feel more significant? Yes. But that's not the majority of my significance. The majority of my significance comes from the business, from the podcast, from being a husband, that that's where I get the majority of my significance from the community. That's really the only sustainable way to do it. The problem is people who have nice things aren't necessarily aware enough to tell you that. And that's where things can get a little bit wonky. So we want to make sure we're always pulling back the curtain on awareness. Strong work, brother. Strong work to you. Strong work to you. Thank you, man. That makes me feel really significant. You should feel significant. (laughs) Nice. Next level, nation. I'll tell you what makes me feel significant, but also it makes me sweat through my clothes. Being on stage. So if you're listening to this, Alan and I are tomorrow. We're flying out to Wisconsin. Obviously, we batch our episodes, but we are having our own event where it's going to be purely next level, just Alan and I on stage and all members of the NLU community. Next Level Live 2023, March 25th, Worcester, Massachusetts. Tickets are going to be $97. We're only selling 50 tickets. We would love, if you're local, we would love to see you. If you're somebody who has to travel, book your travel. Get the Airbnb ready to go. We want to see everybody. That is the beautiful thing of having a podcast is, yes, we have listeners all over the place, but any opportunity we have to bring our listeners together to further the depths of our community, we want to do it. We'd love to see you there. Link is in the show notes. Imagine listening to your favorite song on Spotify versus going to the concert. If you love this podcast, this is the concert. We really hope to see you there. We're going to take pictures. We've got a photo booth. We've got, it's going to be awesome. Can't wait. Also, as you know, we have a book club. We're currently reading a book called Switch. I've been talking a lot about it. It's an awesome book. But we just put a poll up for our new book in book club. And I'm actually going to talk about each of the books really quickly because I want everyone to go and vote. So if you go into Next Level Nation, if you're not in Next Level Nation yet, please join. The link will be in the show notes. I put a poll up yesterday and these are the books that you can choose from. High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard is currently 31% of the vote. The Top 5 Regrets of the Dying by Bronnie Ware is 25% of the vote. Essentialism by Gregory McKeon, which is right behind me. That's 19% of the boat. The vote. <laughs> 19% of the boat. <laughs> Limitless by Jim Quick. 0% of the vote as of right now. No love for Limitless right <laughs> no now. No love. Cleaning Up Your Mental Mess by Dr. Caroline Leaf. 19% of the vote. And then Helen, one of my clients, actually suggested The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek, which is also an incredible book. That is currently 6 percent of the vote if you have not yet voted please go and vote if you want to register for book club it is every saturday 12 30 p.m eastern standard time the link will be in the show notes and we had i think 13 12 12 people uh this past saturday so 
it is awesome. Please join us. And no matter what, you're going to learn a lot, not just from the books, but from the people's perspective about the books. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode one thing most successful dream chasers have in common. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Happy Saturday. Please reach out. Please reach out.